Hey guys, it's your girl Tina. It's time for another recap of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We had a good old funky time on Twitter this past Sunday going in. So let's go ahead and get this recap started. So in the opening scene, we pick up right where we left off. Nene and Claudia are still going back and forth at the table. Nene's going off on Claudia, saying that Claudia's broke and she don't have as much money as she has and all this other stuff. And then Claudia is saying that, you know what, Alicia doesn't have plastic hair. And then Nene's like, your bob is ugly. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand your bob. It don't look right. And I'm not talking about Roger Bob. And then Claudia goes, what's wrong with the bob? It's better than a hair hat. I can tell that Claudia definitely goes on social media a lot because a lot of her comebacks were from social media, like when she said that Nene's hair looked like some uncooked ramen noodles, and then she just said that Nene had a hair hat. I couldn't do nothing but fall out. I'm like, this girl's a straight up mess. And then Nene's like, you know, look at your dress. You know, my dress is couture. It's right off the runway. And Claudia's like, but you're too big to wear runway pieces. She's like, when you have money like I have, they will make you something in your size. So they had me cracking up. And then she's like, you know, your outfit is tacky. Who still wears spaghetti straps? And Claudia's like, well, you look like you had too much spaghetti. So they're just, you know, they're just being super childish now. It's a bit much. But finally, Claudia and team pretty they decide to just walk away and leave the entire conversation and the entire dinner so they end up walking off to themselves moving on to the next scene so in the next scene you have nini phaedra um and candy and portion they're all talking about everything that went down and nini's just you know nini's kind of upset and she's you know talking about claudia's clit once again and then she's telling phaedra that she feels like you know this is phaedra's fault that phaedra wouldn't have started with demetria when it went down and she's just tired of you know claudia and, and, and kenya she's tired of kenya you know basically being the puppet master and playing all these girls against her you know yada 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 nini is the queen of puppet mastery so she can't get mad at kenya because nini has been known to do the same exact thing moving on to the next scene so the next thing we go back to team pretty we have claudia demetria Kenyon, Cynthia, and Claudia is hot. You know, she's like, you know what, I'm tired of Nene. I'm tired of her bullying attitude. You know, I went off on her. I had jaws back. You know, y'all didn't really even say y'all didn't really even say anything, but I went hard for you guys. And Demetria was like basically thanking her. And Cynthia was so damn giddy and happy. She's like, that's what you call a read. Oh my God, Claudia read the hell out of Nene. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't you ever read the hell out of Nene? Because when you get around Nene, you get all, you know, closed mouth and scared and you act like a little five-year-old kid instead of a grown woman. You know, don't get boosted and gassed up now because Claudia done did your dirty work. You know, and then Claudia was like, you know what? And I didn't appreciate how that alligator mouth Porsche was sitting there laughing at me. When she called Porsche alligator mouth, y'all, I fell the hell out. I'm like, Claudia has no chill. These bitches are straight up ruthless. Moving on to the next scene. So it's the next day and they're all sitting around eating breakfast and it's Nene, Portia, and Phaedra. And Nene's saying that she feels really bad about what went down the night before. That usually she doesn't go off like that. And usually she knows how to keep her attitude in check. But that Claudia basically drug Nene out of her. And then Phaedra proceeds to tell everybody that, you know, she couldn't sleep last night because she was on the phone till 4 o'clock in the morning. So now Candy, Portia, and Nene are looking at her like, bitch, who was you talking to till 4 o'clock in the morning? Your man is on his way to jail. You know, but she refuses to say who she was talking to. But you know, everybody's giving her the side eye, like, what's really going on? And then Nene says in her confessional that, you know what? Go on ahead, do your thing. It don't make no sense to hold your coochie down for the next eight years because Apollo's ass is about to go do some time. She might as well go on ahead, do her, start dating, start having sex, and you know, living her life, which I do agree with. I don't think that she should put her life on hold for Apollo because y'all know damn well he would not put his life on hold for Phaedra. Moving on to the next scene. So, in the next scene, we have Team Pretty, and they're all at the pool. And when I tell you, when Kenya was getting into the pool, her booty literally looked like a little beach ball. It was just this huge implant floating on top of the water. I was cracking up. I'm like, Kenya didn't do too much to herself. But, you know, for the most part, they all look pretty in their little bikinis and everything else. And, um, you know, they're just all sitting there chilling. And then this fine Puerto Rican dude comes up and Kenya starts talking to him in Italian. And they're like, fool, you're in Puerto Rico. They speak Spanish. She's like, oh, my God, I, you know, what the hell was I thinking? And I'm like, Kenya is such a mess. And the dude was just so adorable. And they're trying to speak to him in Spanish. But, you know, if he's working in the resort, y'all know good and damn well that man speaks perfect English. So I don't even know why they was trying it. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Team Rich decides to pretend that they're even richer by going to go visit the Cartier store. So it's Portia, Nene, Phaedra, and Candy. So they get to the store and they see these beautiful jewels. And there's this one necklace. It's an elephant necklace. It's really, really pretty. And the man proceeds to tell them that the necklace is $440,000. So they're trying to play it out. They're still trying to hold it like, oh, this is so pretty. No, and damn well, they're thinking to themselves, they can't afford this shit. But of course, Portia chimes in and she basically says, She'll see she can work that out. And then Nene's like, you know what? I don't know who Porsche's messing with. I don't know who she's talking to. 
But obviously this African got a lot of money because, you know, he's lacing Portia up really, really nicely. My thing is other girls are just fronting like they have it like that. They can't afford nothing in Cartier. And the only person who could afford something out of that whole crew is Candy. And I think as frugal as Candy is, she's not going to spend 400k on no damn necklace. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Candy decides to reach out to all the ladies and she wants to invite all the ladies to another Bedroom Candy event. I don't see how many sex events that Bravo can just stuff into one damn season, but it seems like they're always having a Bedroom Candy event. You know, so she tells all the ladies that she wants them to be there. She wants them to come. So then um, Demetria decides to be a bigger person and she goes to knock on Phaedra's door. And she basically wants to apologize to Phaedra because she said that's not her demeanor and that she shouldn't have threw that shade on Phaedra because she doesn't know Phaedra like that. And it was wrong for her to say that, you know, her man is going to prison for the next eight years. And Phaedra basically, you know, chastises her and says that she's tired of that. She's tired of people judging her relationship when they don't know anything that was going on in their relationship. They have no idea and she thought it was pretty you know tacky and unnecessary for um for Demetria to bring that up now what I find funny with this fake ass southern belle is that she can chastise Demetria when Demetria's being the bigger person and apologizing now one time that I hear Phaedra's ass apologize at all you know she basically played it off she high-fived her and then she started sashaying around and showing off her outfit and I'm just like if this bitch don't have several damn seats and I also realized last night that Phaedra got breast implants as you guys know before last night's episode she had the itty bitty titties and she put on a little small push-up bra and try and push her shit in and make Make it you know bigger than what it was and whatever else so i guess she got tired of the push-up bra and she decided to just go on ahead and get some implants but her implants do not look like porsche's she should have went to porsche's doctor because porsche's implants are the shit you know what i'm saying so i'm just not a fan of phaedra i don't care and, and once again her demeanor and how she treated demetria when demetria stepped up and apologized says a lot about Phaedra because any true Southern Belle would have accepted her apology and then would have also apologized for being messy, for throwing shade, and for basically causing this entire situation. You know what I mean? Fe Demetria wouldn't have went off on Phaedra had Phaedra not been throwing shade on her and making all those comments about Roger Bob, her age, and everything else. Phaedra is very rude. She's very cunning, and she likes to throw shade on the low, and then when it comes back on her, she wants to play victim. So that really disgusted me that she felt that she was above apologizing to Demetria for the actions that she played when they got into it. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, everybody's getting ready to go down to the beach. And once again, Candy's throwing a little bit of shade at Portia's outfit. She's saying that Portia's showing everything. She has her titties out, got her booty out. She's showing a bunch of legs. And I'm like, why is Candy always worried about what Portia's wearing and Portia's body? Portia has a hot body. If she wants to show it off, let her show it off. You know what I'm saying? Candy's walking around with damn midriff tops on and tight skirts. And nobody's saying nothing about that. You know, I just feel like it's kind of odd that this is the second time that she says something about Portia and what she's wearing and I think Portia has a lot of really cute swimsuits and you know she looks nice in whatever she wears so I can't knock Portia it is what it is so anyway they get to the beach and then team pretty shows up a little bit later and so they're all there and Candy decides to start this game basically the game is they're gonna be passing dildos in between their thighs and this game just looks super ratchet, super ghetto, but they're passing the dildos in between their thighs and the first person to drop their dildo is Phaedra. And Phaedra says that she's good at a lot of things, you know, she's a great mortician, she's a great lawyer, but passing dildos in between her legs to other women is just one thing that she has not mastered and she's okay with that. So they keep on passing it. Now it's Nene and Claudia's turn. And Claudia ends up, whoops, dropping the damn dildo right on the ground. So now it's between Nene and Cynthia. And they're passing the dildo back and forth. And Cynthia ends up dropping it. And Nene wins. And she jumps up and she starts cheering. And she's like, I won, I won. I mean, you would have thought this bitch won the publisher's clearinghouse away. She was so excited. I thought somebody was going to bring in a $10,000 check. You're the queen of being able to keep a dildo in between your legs. That's not nothing to brag about, nor is it a prize to be won. So I was just cracking up at that whole scene. That whole situation was just a mess. And the next day, they're back on the beach, and it's Portia, Nene, and Phaedra, and Candy. And they start singing about Jesus. And I'm like, these women are so extra. So the night before, y'all was getting drunk and passing dildos in between y'all's thighs. And now y'all want to start singing church hymns. I'm going to need these real housewife ladies to get it back on track. These women are a straight-up mess. Moving on to the next scene. Last and final scene, and these women are on the bus. They're going to go see Demetra perform. Demetra has been working hard and practicing, so she wants the women to be there. So everybody's there, and I've noticed that within the past two scenes, Nini has been wearing a hat. 
So I'm like, I don't know if she's, you know, feeling self-conscious about, you know, her lack of edges or her blonde, you know, plastic wig that's, you know, attached to her head that Claudia went in on her. It's fun that she's now wearing a bunch of hats. So she has on her little white hat and her little outfit and everybody's dressed really, really nice. And Nene decides to apologize to Claudia. Um, she says that she doesn't want to take away from Claudia's achievements or anything. And, um, you know, she was like, she just wants everything to be water under the bridge and that she shouldn't have went there. But Claudia is not willing to let it go so easily. You know, Claudia's like, you know what, it's not cool. You try to put me out there like my accomplishments that meant nothing. You called me a whore. I'm not a whore. You know, you said my clit left my body. You said a lot of really, really disparaging things, and it's not okay. And everybody's looking at Claudia like, bitch, do you know that Nene don't apologize to nobody? You better take this damn apology and run. But Claudia doesn't want that apology that easy. She wants it to be a sincere apology, and I don't blame her for that. So then Portia ends up speaking up and Portia's like, you know, just let it go. You know, what is the big deal? You said some stuff that you didn't like. Nene said some stuff. You know, you said some foul stuff to Nene and Nene said some foul stuff to you. You know, just let it go. Why are you holding on to this? And then Claudia goes off on Portia like, first of all, you know, you don't know anything and I wouldn't even go there. You'd be mad if somebody called you a whore. After all, you're sleeping with a married Nigerian guy for shoes, bags, and clothes. So now they're all looking at Portia and Portia's real quiet. And then Portia goes off and she's like, you know what, what I'm doing with my personal life is my business it's nobody else's business and all of a sudden Portia is like you know what you're being really contradictory um because now you're trying to diminish my accomplishments Claudia and everybody's looking at her like did this bitch just say contradictory like who uses the word contradictory and then she tried to clean it up by using it into a sentence and I was like no Portia you fail once again English is not your first language I'm gonna need her to have several damn seats acting so damn illiterate it just makes no sense how this woman is just so inarticulate 24-7 and to me, I felt like Kenya and Claudia were throwing a lot of shade on Portia. And I also found it funny that a lot of folks on social media had a lot to say about Portia, you know, sleeping with a man for bags. And like I said on Twitter, a lot of y'all, a lot of these females who are trying to go in on Portia are also sleeping around with anything that moves, all types of hood boogers. The only thing they're getting out that relationship is Molly's, Jordan's, and Blunt's. So at least she's getting bags, shoes, and cars. So I'm not mad at Portia. If he wants to trick off his money on her and get her a Rolls Royce and get her $80,000 bags, that's his money. He has the right to trick it off however he wants to. Now, does she have the right to be sleeping with a married man? No, she doesn't. But in this world that we live in, it seems like hoes stay winning. Moving on to the next scene. So now in the last and final scene, they realize that they're running late. So now they're trying to, you know, speed walk into the building so they can catch Demetria's performance. So they all get there. And Demetria gets on stage. And she has on, like, this little cute see-through black outfit. And um, she starts performing. And Demetria has such a beautiful voice. She's killing it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the brat shows up. And the brat starts rapping. And then Kenya's like, oh, cute. There goes Beyonce and Jay-Z. I'm like, Kenya is such a mess with her shade this season. She's cracking me up to no avail. So, you know, Demetria did a really good job. The brat was out there. People were really proud of her. You know, all the women stood up and gave her a standing ovation. So I'm glad that Demetria was able to prove herself and kind of get these ladies to come together and warm up to her more. So anyways, that was my recap for this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let me know what your favorite scene was. What did you think about how Demetria stepped up as a woman, apologized to Phaedra for her mistakes, but then how Phaedra kind of played her and played it off and didn't apologize to her? And then do you feel like Claudia was wrong to not let it go when her and Nene were going back and forth? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. And once again, if you are not following me, I am at Lovely T on Twitter and I'm Lovely T 2002 on Instagram. See you guys next week. Deuces.